Marland from Legislative Council. I'm here today on S-171, the proposed amendment from Senator Bray, and it has the indicated version 11. If you remember yesterday, we were looking at version 10, and this new version incorporates decisions you made yesterday and also some additional changes. The copy that the committee members have, the paper copy, has highlights on it. The copy on the website is exactly the same, but it doesn't have those highlights, but I'll try to always indicate what line we're on so everyone can follow along. As to section one, you'll see on lines 15, 16, and 17, there's new uh, language added. There was also language in the last draft about low to moderate income, which was taken out. So now those lines read services for residential customers, including those at the income level, that's the same language as before, and projects that may result in larger greenhouse gas reductions. That new language about greenhouse gas reductions was added in response to some of the comments that were made yesterday about biggest bang for the buck. Going down to two, lines 21, 22, and 23, there was language added. Any funds that are allocated to efficiency Vermont and that comma, and this is a new language, as a result of operational efficiencies are not spent on or committed to another project in 2019 or 2020. So there was some discussion about parameters or guidelines. These, this language is added to make clear to people where that money comes from and that it's not money that would have otherwise been spent on another project. Are there any questions about those changes? Going on to have one later about taking the money that haven't been spent from treating the ones from commercial industrial ways that have been spent differently than home than plumbing ways that haven't been spent. Thank you. On page two at the top, B uh, states, and once again we're still in section one. Funds used pursuant to subsection A of this section, what we just talked about, shall not be used to sup supplant existing programs and services and shall only be used to supplement existing programs and services. C, Efficiency Vermont shall report to the PUC on one, how funds were spent pursuant to subsection A, and two, the costs and benefits of the programs and services delivered. So once again, B makes clear you're not taking money from the program, um, and it's only to use to supplement an existing program or service, and C is the reporting back to PUC. So both of those are new, and both of those are reflection of decisions and conversations you had yesterday. Any questions about that text? It strikes me as not making any change in policy. Policy in the sense that they can access and use the carry forward or the unspent funds. You are correct, they still can do that. But it does give a reporting requirement that's new and does perhaps give some guidelines. I get yeah. Going on to page three, now we're in section two, which is the Public Utility Commission proceeding. On page three, you'll see that in line one and two, there's a reference to furthering the objectives in 30 BSA 209 D3B. This used to be on line six or seven. The reference was there, it simply was moved up. That was a reflection of suggestion made by a stakeholder yesterday. So it's no change in substance, it's just moving that cross-reference. Going on to page four. We're now on lines 12, 13, and 14. This is the funding area that the PUC will have to report back on how to pay for its recommendations as to one and two. 13, equitable was added, I'm sorry, on line 14, equitable was added in. So it reads, the commission shall consider and recommend how best to provide consistent, adequate, and equitable funding for, et cetera. Proceeding on to page five, B, on lines 10, 11, and 12. This is new language. And once again, we're still in the section about funding. B states, in reaching its recommendations pursuant to subdivision A of this subdivision three, 
in other words, how to pay for any recommendations it makes pursuant to one and two. The commission shall consider how any recommendation may affect the financial and economic well-being of Vermonters. <coughs> now going down to lines 15 and 16, we're in the process language. And you'll see on line 15, the language was added, the commission may use contested case procedures if it deems appropriate. Those are all the changes from the draft you saw yesterday. Are there any questions about that? Mr. Chair, the reason we're making some changes here is to not do business as usual. We're going to do less of one thing and more of something else. And I don't see where the language is clear what we're going to do less of and what we're going to do more of. And we're going to take redirect money that used to be limited exclusively to electric efficiency work that was contributed by fees from homeowners and dwellings and spend it to do work that was previously not permitted under law to do weatherization of thermal work in those homes. Someone reading this said, jump right out. I don't know if that's what we're doing, but I don't see that. It just seems to be unspoken. <clears throat> I think it's in the council can help, but I think it's built into the cross-references. So, for instance, the... Built into the cross-references. Okay, so on line 13 of page 1, it says that... Uh, Just to be clear, the point on line 20 is carry forward. But okay. what, what you're saying is correct. But so the first cross reference, Senator McDonald, is their existing ability to do thermal efficiency programs. That's why they are saying you can do that. But it does not listen any more specificity. You are correct. Okay. Well, we, I, I, for one, why do you complain about contracts that have a lot of small print that don't come out and say, well, I understand what you're saying, you want it clear, but 
I don't know any, none of my constituents are going to say, I'm going to go take a look at the bill. They're going to read about it, you know, a, a, sort of a summarized version in the press or somewhere else. That's the part that I'm, I'm just trying to understand. I also believe we intend for money is used for the swelling between now and the next period of months, perhaps the rest of this year, that some of those might be used to be re to train more people to engage in new activities that are being authorized. But it doesn't say that or it doesn't clearly say that. Um, well, for instance, but maybe the cross references can be interpreted by some board to do what we haven't said explicitly. But it just it's, I'm surprised. So we usually a little more. Well, it's very forward. Uh, the law is carefully crafted, implemented. The PUC can use it. They have to bring a plan forward, a demand reduction plan, and get approval, deliver performance measures. So we're 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 trying to be precise by wiring this shift of policy into the programs that they already have. What a great concern. I mean, I agree it's not that readable to go through. I mean, the more user-friendly part of it is to say, in line 14, that we're using the weatherization services for residential customers, and then we specify you know, income levels. Uh, and then we add on um, what you were talking about yesterday, projects that may result in larger greenhouse gas reductions. So that it's not just about kilowatt hours. We're talking about reducing emissions. Priority is show them. That's my concern. Too cute. when we're saying we're taking money from here and we're going to spend it there and we think spending it there provides more yeah. benefits and then you say and then let, tell people what we're doing. I, I, the only, I, yeah, no, I, 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 I just, yeah, anymore. this might be for another time. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <clears throat> the, I mean, the only thing I can think of is like that is maybe the finding or a purpose where there's a narrative. To right, but I think we can discuss it. Tell you about right. what's coming. But, so I appreciate that, and maybe we'll find a way to communicate more clearly what the policy change you're talking about. In terms of the tools, we're wiring it in very carefully to where it all really is effectuated. Um, so does anyone in the committee have any concerns about energy uh, speed? Or um, any questions for council? Thank you very much. Um, so let me pause before we go on. I know that Mr. Springer is here to talk to us about this draft. Um, is there anyone else in the room that uh, that has a concern about any edits we've made from yesterday to today? Okay. Um, that's so. I'd like to invite Mr. Springer. So I do. Oh, you do. I, I have a question. I missed your hand. That's okay. So, for the record, Abby Way, Efficiency Vermont. This is a Department of Public Service and Efficiency Vermont. I have a question about a section one, subsection A, one and two. Okay. <clears throat> Wondering, and, and please, TJ, jump in here, but. With section one, without the dates, does it imply that the carryover could be used in this way in perpetuity? Uh, and it, is it implied there that both one and two are needed together? Well, they're ended, right? So that's just 
so we wanted some clarity on that, that that's, re that's kind of required that they would be taken together and that there wouldn't be a scenario where the bonds would be used in the way. Right, so if you want, you know, my counsel, please correct me if I'm misinterpreting. One says that you can uh, use balances, uh, and then two says, but for calendar years 19 and 20. Okay. <clears throat> and, and the explicit timing was to be complementary to the proceeding, so that while we're doing this interim program, it is strictly interim, and that then the proceeding will conclude. And, there's going to be an ongoing change that we'll use the recommendations out of the proceeding and that the legislature will sit down and rewrite in order to make it a permanent change. So it should test for next year to we'll get an interim spell out what begins in 2001. <laughs> okay. That's, okay. So are you all set with that? Yes, I think we're going to okay. And then I, one additional comment if I sure. may. So under, um, again, section one, section A, last line, uh, 16 and 17, the, the reference to greenhouse gas reduction. Just You're on section, sorry, section one? Sorry, section, yes, yeah, so so section line, one, subsection A, line 16, 16 and 17. Thank you, yep. Um, just wanted to point out that for a practical purpose, this may be difficult to operationalize because we don't evaluate <clears throat> homes and we don't prioritize projects and homes based on GHG production. And our intent would be more to get the dollars out, drive volume of homes throughout the market, going from 80 to 140, and then also using the TEPF funds that we have available now to serve the full market. So that would be the priority. But I you think. do prioritize in some ways you mentioned yesterday when you get to a home, right, around, back to this is Senator McDonald's comment about how do you get the most, how do you prioritize so you invest in a particular area in a home so that you reduce the amount of greenhouse gases. It sounds like you do that already in a way, right? Right, for every home we're looking uh -huh. at the, the maximum impact that we can have at on reducing greenhouse gases or on? Right, I mean, we're looking at a reduction in, technically we're looking at reduction in airflow. So there, and this is what I talked about yesterday, there's a, we're looking primarily for cost effectiveness and sometimes, in many cases, cost effectiveness will, um, is a good correlation to greenhouse gas reduction, but in certain cases it's not based on the fuel source mm -hmm. that's in the home. So are you um, concerned that 1617 implies some sort of project selection process? Well, I don't think, it, I don't think it does with the, with the May, yeah. but I just want it to be clear around the way in which we would intend to operationalize the funds okay. to spend the money, which I think is the so as primary long as the May intent. is there, you're comfortable yes. with that language. Yes. Okay. But I wanted to yep. just clarify that okay. for the committee. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll just get the double check, make sure that we all think the words mean the same thing. Okay, great. If there's no other comments from the room at large, then um, okay. Invite Mr. Springer. Good to, Good to see you again. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, Darren Springer, General Manager, of Burlington Electric Department. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague Chris Burns, who is the Director of Energy Services and helps to run the team that does our energy efficiency utility work uh, in Burlington. Um, prepared some very brief slides. If I have a couple minutes just to walk through, or would you yeah. prefer briefer? I'm happy to be more concise. Um, I think the committee's familiar with, with Burlington Electric. First slide just has some background information. Uh, we are an appointed energy efficiency utility for the city of Burlington. Uh, so we are an EEU along with Efficiency Vermont and Vermont Gas. And roughly 95% of our service territory is also served by Vermont Gas. 
So most folks in Burlington have access to uh, thermal weatherization services and efficiency incentives through either through us or through Vermont Gas, uh, depending on which measure, and we work very, very closely with them. Uh, for the very few oil and propane customers in Burlington, we serve as the EEU for those customers. And I would note we've, uh, we've had no rate case since 2009. We're trying to go another year, hopefully. So we'll, hopefully when we're back next year, we can say it's been 11 years without a rate case. Currently it's 10. We're trying to keep that going. So no gold plating? No. No. Prudent management uh, is, is, the, is the effort. Um, the first slide just talks a little about our energy efficiency utility efforts. Um, we've really been working on efficiency since 1980s, and we really try to track our data back to 1989, because in 1990 we had an $11.3 million revenue bond uh, to invest in energy efficiency. So uh, we always track back to 1989, and even with a growing community uh, population growth of, I believe, over 12%, and a, a commercial square footage growth that's a good bit more than that, uh, we actually are using 6.1% less electricity today uh, than we did in 1989. Uh, and that figure was fact-checked by Vermont Digger and found true, or mostly true. So uh, <laughs> take that to the bank. Uh, so, and, and you know, in thinking about the comparison, uh, just to give some context, statewide electric consumption is up 8.4% during that same period of time. Nationally, uh, electric consumption is up around 29% uh, during that same period of time. I went back and looked at some data yesterday. Uh, I believe, if my math is correct, that if the United States had followed the Burlington uh, trajectory and was 6.1% lower than the US was in 1989, you could essentially eliminate all megawatt hours currently uh, you know, produced by coal for electricity in the United States. <laughs> because I think we get about 27% of our electricity from coal. And uh, that's a, that gives some fair context into the accomplishment of decoupling the electric use from the economic growth that's happening. Um, in addition to, to those numbers, uh, between us and our customers, we've invested over 70 million during that period of time. And we are now saving uh, for our customers on electric bills 12 million annually. Uh, and that's a factor of avoided wholesale energy costs, avoided capacity costs, avoided transmission costs, and uh, other savings. So a really good return on the investment uh, for our customers in terms of energy efficiency. In addition to running the energy efficiency programs, uh, and we are also uh, you know, recognized as one of the utilities in the state with a 100% renewable uh, portfolio of generation, um, we are working very hard on reducing fossil fuel use in the heating and transportation sectors as part of a net zero goal that the city has, uh, a 2030 vision to, to move away from fossil fuel in the heating and transportation sectors. Uh, the renewable energy standard legislation that I know this committee worked on and others in 2015 has given us some strong tools to make progress in that area through tier three. Uh, I laid out on slide uh, page four uh, some of the programs that we're currently offering uh, in the tier three space. Uh, we have electric vehicle and plug-in hybrid incentives. Uh, we have an electric vehicle charging station incentive that goes along with our EV incentive. So you can get $1,200 if you buy an EV or lease an EV. If you're low moderate income, you can get $1,800. And then in either case, you can get an additional 400 towards a charging station. And then once you have the charging station, you can sign up for our off-peak rate and charge between 10 at night and noon the next day for the equivalent of 60 cents a gallon of gas. Uh, so it's, it's a really good deal uh, for EV drivers. And one of the ways that we're working on demand management with new EV drivers is to try to incentivize off-peak uh, usage so that we don't end up having to build more infrastructure uh, for the grid. We also are working all throughout the transportation sector. We have two electric buses that we've helped to incentivize that'll be coming to the uh, Green Mountain Transit fleet this summer. Uh, we have an electric bike rebate program with a number of local retail bike shops uh, in Burlington. And we also offer cold climate heat pump incentives for our oil and propane customers and are working on efforts to expand that to also cover our natural gas customers as well. Um, I have a quick question on the EV. Um, absolutely. So, uh, do you know what your uptake rate is compared to the state line average? On, on EV uh, rebates? Yeah, and how many people are taking advantage of the program? Uh, well, slide five has at least our numbers. I, I don't have a comparison for the um, for the rest of the state, but we've done 77 rebates since uh, we launched the program uh, in May of 2017. Uh, three of those have been low and moderate income rebates. Uh, we are, obviously we'd like to do more, and we, we continue to offer the program with the hopes that the growth will continue to be strong. I think the, 
the most significant moment we saw was when Nissan was doing a really uh, good deal on the outgoing Nissan LEAF uh, back in 2017. I think we and Greenmount Power and other utilities were participating in that. Uh, the uptake was very strong. You could get 10,000 off the LEAF plus a $7,500 tax credit plus the utility incentive. So you could get a brand new EV at that time for around $13,000, which is a very good deal. Uh, a lot of people took advantage of that. Um, so 77 rebates, we also, uh, we have 14 public charging stations with 26 charging ports in the city that we operate and we're going to be expanding that uh, in the coming year. We're gonna be adding several new ports, uh, new charging locations. Um, I, I provided here just, uh, you know, a one month snapshot, March of 2019, 875 sessions, uh, 7.2 megawatt hours of consumption. Uh, we find that in a number of cases, particularly near the downtown, a number of the drivers are from outside of Burlington or even outside the state of Vermont who are coming through to stop, charge, and uh, continue on to a destination. Um, and then just going to uh, page six, uh, really what we're, we're here for today with S-171, uh, we're really focusing our comments on section two on the PUC proceeding uh, with a request uh, for the committee to consider uh, language here that would accept us from the consideration of the appointment of new entities to manage an all fuels utility. Uh, with the reason being, as I mentioned, we're in a unique spot in the state where we're both the distribution utility and the efficiency utility. We're the only uh, utility in that situation. Uh, we also are unique in that uh, Vermont Gas, which is also in the EU, covers almost universally our entire service territory. And we don't see that there would be uh, a need for an appointment of an additional entity to cover all fuels uh, programs because we believe they're currently covered uh, in the city of Burlington comprehensively, either through us or uh, through Vermont Gas. And obviously running the efficiency program is uh, a critical benefit for us. Uh, Chris and his team of, uh, it's a lean team of six professionals, uh, engineers and specialists, HVAC specialists and others, uh, work with our commercial and residential customers. Uh, we are doing all kinds of interesting outreach uh, with multifamily units, rentals, new American communities, uh, trying to help uh, get more access to our programs and our incentive and our expertise. And uh, the proceeding, as I understand it, uh, because it's a PUC proceeding that might consider the appointment of new entities, uh, would potentially have us uh, focused for the next year or two on trying to defend our appointment, essentially, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to continuing to make progress on our programs. And so we would respectfully request the consideration of the language on page six for that reason. Well, and, you know, I've, in discussions with Mr. Springer yeah, yesterday afternoon, right, mm -hmm. when I said, uh, asked him if he could come in and make presentation on this. Um, I'll lay out the position, you know, as I saw that, that we were opening a proceeding that was quite wide open, as in uh, we are talking about changing the roles for distribution utilities, we are talking about changing the role of energy efficiency utilities, we are even talking about non-utilities entering into the mix of S purposes like that. So, um, and my, you know, so as much as I admire what he is doing, and I think you're doing great things, I just said, since we're we're trying to create a level playing field where we're going to evaluate everything on the basis of um, what's best for the long term, I, I was comfortable myself saying that I could see carving out any particular path. You could or could not. Could not. Okay. You know, that, so I, I don't say that anymore. You know, confrontational. I just sounds I didn't, confrontational. I didn't know how I could <laughs> say uh, we're doing something different in the case of this one utility. So uh, that's that was the background for coming in. So I appreciate you, you know, sharing the exact great work you're already doing. I'm interested in committee discussion about um, your interest in creating basically a carve out. And if I could further yeah, clarify, yes. we are happy to participate in the proceeding. Uh, mm -hmm. We would offer whatever uh, value we could in the proceeding uh, if that's desirable. Uh, it may be that the model we have is something folks want to look at. Uh, others may want to look at. Uh, the reason for the request is, you know, quite simply, unless there was going to be an effort to have our efficiency programs taken over by Efficiency Vermont, there is no other entity that could credibly make a uh, pitch to run the programs, I don't believe, in the city of Burlington. Between us and Vermont Gas, we already run them. Uh, we have good history on them. There's a lot of infrastructure around that. 
Uh, so unless there was a move for, for that, which I don't believe is the case, uh, there doesn't seem to be a need to consider appointment of a new entity in Burlington, given that we already have coverage. Can you just help me understand a little bit about, so if this language, if we don't include this language, what's sort of the, the worst case scenario that might, with you guys, or what might happen that you yeah. would be concerned about? Uh, I think given the language in section two, um, the PUC could consider and, you know, potentially recommend to the legislature uh, to remove our appointment as an efficiency utility uh, and replace us with a efficiency Vermont or potentially somebody else, but uh, it's hard for me to see who else would have the infrastructure to run that type of program. And we really do see a unique benefit in continuing to serve the community. Uh, we were doing this before Efficiency Vermont was created. That's why we have the exemption that we have. And there have been other uh, places in law, including I think in the renewable energy standard, where our unique role as a distribution utility and an efficiency utility uh, was recognized and granted uh, some exemption from, from other uh, processes like this. to work with the committee um, my understanding and, and please correct me if I don't have it correct uh, my understanding was that the proceeding was to look at the coordination between efficiency Vermont the distribution utilities uh, how how tier three is working how different uh, programs around energy storage demand management are working how the electric efficiency program is working where there are gaps um, and those considerations are quite different in Burlington given the setup that we have vis-a-vis uh, -vis the rest of the, okay, the state you see beyond 1121. Well, and that's, I mean, you'd be delighted to participate in that discussion. We would be very happy to participate in the discussion. Yeah. That's right. Sure. Uh, Senator, I'm, I'm wondering if the PUC has anything to say about this or a position as to whether or not it, it, it makes any difference to any of you if we were to pull them out. I mean, honestly, in some ways, it, to me, it makes sense. I don't think, think we have any problem. I haven't discussed it with anyone yet, though. Okay. So you're reluctant to give you a formal position on it, but I can get back to you. That would be helpful. Inefficiency Vermont? Are you looking at me right? No, I'm oh. looking at TJ. All right. I, I think the department's position on the study um, throughout is to not presuppose any answers to the questions you're trying to ask. And so keeping it broad, um, we don't know what the answers are going to be. Springer uh, pointed out has had a long history of uh, delivering good programs um, and it has uh, really pushed forward on the tier three as well. Um, but, you know, I, we don't know what this proceeding is going to say long term. Uh, and so I think the department would maintain that we, we don't want to presuppose any answers and providing an exemption probably would do that. We, you know, if that language was in here, we probably wouldn't you know, put a big objection to it. Um, but uh, and for the record, sorry, TJ Walks in the Department of Public Service. So is it the chair, may I ask, is it partly your intention of keeping it in, or, or not putting this in, that indeed the PUC could come back and recommend that Burlington Electric not mm -hmm. have the role that it's currently had, currently has as a Energy efficiency utility. Is that? Yeah, I'm just trying to get I, a I sense. Is that scrupulously even handed? Uh -huh. I'm not presupposing, prejudging any outcome. That we are really saying, we're we're asking the PUC to help uh, guide the next decade or two on providing uh, energy efficiency services across mm -hmm. um, thermal. Uh, well, we're talking mostly about thermal, but anyway, across the the variety of fuels we use. And we're not presupposing anything, and so that was that was you know as much as I appreciate the work that you did, uncomfortable uh, drawing a line that says 
years. You're not actually, you would, you could be, we're not allowing the PUC to consider how they might participate in some sort of recommendation back to the legislature. The other thing, from my point of view, is what's coming back is a recommendation we as policymakers would have to change the law with the status that BED currently has. It's already it's well established. It wouldn't change during any kind of proceeding. That would be up to another act of the legislature in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, this said, did they testify that they wish to remain unstudied? Mm -hmm. No, I, that, well, I would be careful. And that's, Mr. Springer said, here. If they, we have to participate. The question was whether or not the recommendations could include a recommendation that would impact their situation. Uh, Senator, Senator, all recommendations are on the table. Yeah. Senator, uh, I would tend to agree with the chair. I think you guys have done a good job. I don't think you're in any danger of of losing that. I don't think the PUC is going to make a drastic change and say now you've we're going to let somebody else do that, or that's the recommendation. But um, I guess I would be concerned with naming one carbon utility and carving it out. Uh, I think the UC has been uh, fair in the, the stuff that, they, uh, that we've asked them to do for us. And so I don't, I'm, I'm sure they're a little worried about it, but quite frankly, I think it'll be a fair process and they'll continue to work as, as they have. And I would not want to carve it out. And I think, honestly, we've made a lot of the parties a little uncomfortable uh, because we're trying to have a be an open, uh, an open discussion. If, if, I'm, if I can, uh, respectfully with the committee, uh, appreciating the conversation, I do think it sends a signal when the legislature asks the PUC to reconsider the appointment of the efficiency utilities or new entities. Um, I appreciate that they will run a fair process. We will, we will participate in that process regardless, but certainly if this language is not included, uh, we'll participate vigorously and defend our record uh, against any uh, potential change. Um, that will require you know, a fair amount of effort, but um, I do think it sends a signal when the legislature puts language forward saying we're dissatisfied essentially with the status quo and we want you to consider change. Um, you know, and so our concern is is that that can be interpreted down the road a year or two from now, uh, potentially with different actors uh, in different places uh, differently. And this would be a, a, if there's a way to have a signal in here that there's not an intent to change the energy efficiency utility in Burlington, we would welcome that signal uh, given the work that we've done. Well, I would, th I would think that we are asking to look at all alternatives and perhaps there are entities out there that want to get into the game whether they want to compete with you or work for other utilities or what they want to do but I think we as a legislature need to have all the options on the table and see who can provide the, the most and best services and as I said I think you guys got a good track record you've got your foot in the door I think it's hard for anybody to compete in, in your area but there may be other people out there that we don't know can provide these sort of services that I think we need to look at, no matter where from. Are you the only ones that did predate efficiency reform? Mm -hmm. Well, the, that I, way, I, you mentioned? I believe other utilities were running efficiency programs at that time. Yeah. And I think, well, Senator McDonald may quibble with my characterization of, of efficiency programs, but um, we were the only ones whose program, I believe, was credible enough to maintain our status, if I can say it that way. Mm -hmm. And we're public power utility, and we, uh, you know, have I think demonstrated that we have, uh, even to our own revenue detriment, uh, a commitment to efficiency that uh, that is strong and continuing. Well, as you know, so from a fiduciary responsibility point of view, as a legislator, we're, we're part of what's driving the whole thing. And so we, because we're uh, through law and directly ratepayer dollars into programs that. Feeling that we go to all ratepayers and say we're looking out for the low cost alternative, and that could involve changes to the system overall. I, I mean, I, we're asking people to compete in the merits, and I think the first electric would have a very strong case to compete in the merits. And, but it's, the, the one thing I think, uh, I'm sorry to hear you say that, um, you think that our signal, the PUC signal, signifies dissatisfaction. 
I, I think it's, it's not a signal around dissatisfaction. It's a, a signal, from my point of view, around the electrical system has changed so dramatically in 20 years. But is it a good time to pause and say, if we're looking ahead for the next one, what kind of regulatory landscape do we want to have that would allow us to do more work, more cost effectively for more people? Mm -hmm. that's, that's the thrust that's really positive and forward looking, not in any way accusatory about past performance. No, I appreciate that. And I think, you know, the concern again is um, we have different models, obviously, with the efficiency utilities and with tier three, consciously created differently. The efficiency utility model, except for Burlington and Vermont Gas, is a statewide program. Uh, there was thinking, I think, during the time when tier three was developed that you could simply expand that statewide program to cover these new purposes and have an all fuels utility of some sort. Uh, and it would require more money, but it would cover more things. And the, the beauty to me of tier three, the way that it's played out, is different utilities are trying different things. Um, we are doing different things in Burlington for our customer base than Vermont Electric Co-op. We don't have uh, seasonal maple syrup uh, producers who we can help uh, get off of diesel, uh, but that's a great program that they're running and the Green Mountain is running. Uh, we have buses that we can electrify, which may not be as prevalent in other parts of the state. So I think our concern would be uh, we really do see a value in continuing to serve our customers as an efficiency utility. And we would not want to be, and I don't think there's any desire in Burlington to be uh, part of the statewide efficiency effort if we're continuing to deliver good value and good service. And I still don't have a clear signal as to whether that's in any way the, uh, not from the committee necessarily, but whether there's going to be a, a move for that or not. Sure. And I think that's by, in part why the, the language is also as new or existing. Mm -hmm. We're not going to draw a line around any current set of actors and say, we're not inviting anyone into that workspace. And we're not trying to take anyone who's in the current workspace and push them out either. Right. So, um, Senator Parent, do you have any thoughts or observations on that? Okay. Um, any other questions for Mr. Spencer? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I think you have Mr. Burns with you. I don't know if you wanted him to offer any comments or he's here for extra information if you needed it. Exactly. Okay. All right, so okay, let's, uh, we, uh, let's take a break for 15 minutes and then we'll resume at quarter of 10. <clears throat> John's here. Brian told me we had adjourned. <laughs> it's part of my strategy. We adjourned for the session. <laughs> Go home, Roger. <laughs> Quiet. Um, during the break, uh, Mr. Monken approached me about talking about Who's the work that? in the uh, air card moment. Am I saying your last name properly? Monker, yes. 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 Well, I didn't know because you were mispronouncing it now. You know. <laughs> oh, I'm I just, I'm sorry. I, I stick with for those things. So yeah, we're going to invite uh, Mr. Monker to join us at the table. Um, get a proposal uh, to run past us. Good morning. Thanks for coming back in. Good morning, Senator. Committee members. Good morning, Senators. Good morning. Good morning. For the record, Eric Manka testifying on behalf of the Vermont Affordable Housing Coalition and the um, Vermont Community Action Partnership. So uh, thanks for the time. Uh, I won't take a lot of your time on the agenda, but um, we had uh, sent, um, having reviewed um, Yesterday's uh, version of S-171, um, we had some concerns about uh, the section, uh, section two, uh, paragraph three on funding. Um, and the concern uh, goes to, um, we have an existing dedicated funding source for low-income weatherization assistance program. Um, and uh, our concern was that this uh, funding source could end up kind of in the mix of reconsideration uh, by the PUC under this language. So um, we had sent some uh, suggested uh, amendment language that would essentially carve out the existing uh, funding for low-income weatherization uh, run by the Community Action uh, Partnership and, and their weatherization assistance programs uh, in um, paragraph 3A, small i, and small uh, 2i. We uh, shared that with Senator Bray and appreciate uh, a moment of your time to, to just speak to that. Um, 
I guess I would start off by re uh, reminding folks, um, and you've heard a lot of testimony about low-income weatherization. Um, one of the uh, major features, I think, of that testimony is to remind you all that it is both an energy efficiency program as well as a human services program. Um, and that it, it has been around for many, many years. It's been multiply uh, vetted um, through studies. It's been vetted every few years when the funding sources come in for reauthorization by this body. Um, and most recently, uh, three years ago, um, there was a restructuring of that dedicated funding um, through the, the fuel taxes um, that, uh, that are you know, currently in statute and actually up for reauthorization uh, as of July 1 and are being considered for reauthorization uh, next door uh, in uh, finance in the, um, in the revenue bill. Um, so we want, we would ask you to put language into those sections to make it clear uh, that when the PUC does uh, look at all um, existing and or new funding sources um, to uh, possibly realign that uh, that existing funding source um, be uh, taken off the table for, uh, for consideration. Um, we have no objection to looking at um, ways to accelerate low income and moderate income um, weatherization. In fact, we strongly supported, uh, supported both, um, but in terms of the existing uh, funding source and, and what it uh, raises, what it raises um, currently through the two cent um, fuel tax on, uh, on number two heating uh, fuel the, um, and, and on uh, natural gas as, as well as uh, electricity, that, um, that that be carved out. Um, program's been around, like I said, 30 years. It's been vetted uh, multiply. And um, to have the PUC basically take a look at um, a program that has this dual purpose of both energy efficiency and human services and look at it purely from an energy efficiency standpoint um, really, I, I, I think, would be, uh, uh, it, it would be do a disservice to the program and everything else that it does in addition to the energy efficiency um, that it provides for, for low-income Vermonters. So the, uh, the language we're modifying here and the proceeding we're asking for is related to Title 30 and, and the low-income modernization program you're talking about is 33, so I'm not sure that the PUC would uh, start uh, reimagining how a uh, statue outside their purview would be. Um, I don't see it yet. Altered. No, I, and I respect right. it. Yeah. People will get the position concerned, but it just, I agree, it is completely out of there. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at the language in section, in, in paragraph three on, on, uh, on the funding, um, where it, you know, it's pretty global. Um, if you just read that, um, then it's, you know, look at all existing and, you know, potential future um, funding sources. So that, that's, that's where our concern is coming from. Um, Understandable. We're, I mean, we're highly supportive of the program. As a matter of fact, that's where we started on it. Un un understood. And that's where we're going to end up yeah. closing the loop. We end up so reaching off on some moderate income motivation programs and how efficiency from on might be able to use uh, uh, savings they've achieved through uh, changing their program to do more work in that space. Uh, but before the legislature acts on this, I hope that we're also finding additional monies to bring in to the well, we certainly testify to that and, and floating um, all boats. Would, would, um, we, would, we would welcome that. Um, we're not sure exactly how that's going to happen yet, but um, we'll, we'll stay tuned and um, would, would clearly welcome that. I guess, um, you know, with those, with those assurances, I guess we should feel comfortable with, with that. Um, I would still say if, for someone that just reads um, section paragraph three on funding um, and um, looks at existing uh, and new funding sources to better support existing efficiency and conservation programs and services. I, I, I think a plain reading of just that would lead someone to believe that everything's on the table. Sure. Well, and so part of the reason the language is so broad is because we realize that um, if we can't look at, if the board couldn't look at unregulated fuels, then we would be uh, 
constrain the discussion across the street in an important way. And, and we're not suggesting that unregulated fuels shouldn't be looked at for an, you know, in, an increase um, and for both, uh, and for that increase to go, as we testified multiply, uh, to go to both low income and moderate income weatherization. So we're, we're fully in agreement um, with the committee's intent on that. Um, uh, any questions for So again, just I'm looking and thinking of time. The, the vehicle for this is it going on its own, or can you talk for a moment yeah. about that? Okay. Just so, let's, so up on the board, uh, discuss that's one seventy one pathway uh, that up this morning. So my sense is, you know, in terms of having a bill to move, I'd like to see us rather than just yeah. tidy up an amendment and then hand it off to a committee as to uh, which is. No, I, I don't think it's a good idea. So yeah. actually, I think it needs to come from right. here. So I'd like to, um, for us to finish up 171, and then to uh, do a strike call on 63, so we'd still do the streets remittance uh, modification. So this would go on 63? And we lay it on 63. OK. Um, it also says remove heating fuel tax right. provisions. So we're not, that's, we're, that was because 171 is introduced including the two sets on heating fuels. We're going to yeah. throw some moose and beer language in that bill, too. Keep it exciting. Moose and beer language. Uh, and I haven't really thought of that as a. We need to find a boat for that to ride, too. Well, we have 292. It's 292, okay. 292, the signs. Banners. Signs, berms, moose. Okay, yeah. That could become like a little bit of a miscellaneous <coughs> all. Um, so we would do that, and then we would vote it out because it's SGs for sure. It goes down to all the finance. When it's in finance, that's where I think the conversation about uh, between finance and the process, where the conversation about finding additional revenues to bring to growing and work, yeah, will get resolved, okay. and then uh, I don't know, get from there. I'm not sure. Finance might then say, "Well, we're actually where the best vehicle we see is to take."
Or at least voices. Living in Spinetti for three months. Now she knows what we feel. Right. Like. <laughs> Is it really our intent? <laughs> no, no. I'm just, okay. I know, sorry. Okay, I'll perk up a little. Oh, no. This has been so much fun. More coffee, um, more coffee. More coffee, please. No, the, the work that Burlington Electric does is, is um, as Darren testified, is, is really nation leading. So it's always been our hope through the proceeding that we can find ways to improve the collaboration with existing entities. I've testified to that. Um, I think that we have um, risk as well should the proceeding determine that Efficiency Vermont is not the proper entity. So, um, but it's definitely not our intent to supplant any of the good work that's happening, whether it's through Burlington Electric or any of the other utilities. But to figure out how, how um, that can be bolstered and improved all of our work together. Thank you. Um, so is there anyone else in the room who has a question about uh, the bill, the, next, the version as it currently exists? Mr. Coya? Uh, Matt Coda, the Vermont Builders Association. Uh, this is a point I brought up yesterday. Um, and I'm not a lawyer, but I'm not trying to play one. I'm just trying to make sure that I know what hats to wear during the PC proceeding in regards to all fields of issues that should just become law. When you look at uh, the Public Utility Commission proceeding, uh, where it talks about all regulated, unregulated fuels and fossil fuels as defined by 30 BSA 209E3. And those three uh, things, regulated fuels, unregulated fuels, and fossil fuels, are on 209E3, D, E, and F. Uh, F would be thermal fuels, heating or propane. Uh, regulated fuels, of course, would be the regulated fuels, and D, fossil fuels, which would encompass gasoline, diesel so in a way it seems like it is it is just thermal but also if you if you use the word fossil fuels as defined by 30 bsa it could include <coughs> diesel fuel and gasoline i'm just trying to find out so the intent so i can know what the purpose of so we're not intent well if you said we were like we could that's the transportation that would be right i mean i guess there's two thoughts come to mind so Figure this out in real time. One is we're, we're not asking them to weigh in on motor fuels or transportation fuels. Um, but there's not quite as bright of a line as I might think it is. If what they're also looking at is load management over time, and we're in an environment where we're increasingly electrifying, we wouldn't want them to say they can't think about electric vehicles because of the, we're now treading on the no fossil fuel or transportation. So I don't, uh, those are the two things that I'm feeling are sort of pulling us in a slightly different way. So I appreciate your question and I want to make sure that we're clear. Um, we'll get you counsel. I don't know if you uh, have a recommendation based on. Do you want me to try to answer this for this question? Yes, yeah, please. <coughs> so, as he indicated, this is something we discussed previously. It states, the commission shall consider whether to recommend that one more entity should be appointed to provide for the coordinated development, implementation, and monitoring of efficiency, conservation, related programs and services as to does not limit by field. Then it has, as he indicated, fuels, unregulated fuels, and fossil fuels. And it has cross-reference to that definition when we went through a prior version of this, I mentioned that those definitions are broad and they may <coughs> cross over each other. So would this include gasoline? Yes. Would this include all other fuels? Yes. 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 It's all fuels. It, depending, depending what their recommendations are, it could be quite broad. Okay. Well, given that the charge is um, coordinated development, implementation and monitoring efficiency conservation, programs, and it seems like we're steering enough. Well, I, I'm satisfied. Yeah. 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 Anyone else want to make a change? Yeah. So thank you for raising it. And okay. for one is for our okay. um, With that, uh, then I would look for
other motions. One would be amend 171 as proposed in, uh, well, we're getting one more edit to it, so. Uh, and that was the additional language on calendar years for section seven. Section one? Correct. Okay, so um, if we call that draft version 12. You can do that, yeah. Okay, so then that would be version 12, so it would be a motion thing. Uh, and then S171 using version 12. So moved. Any questions? Any questions? I'm sorry, I wasn't planning on the motion, so just yes. take it. Sure. Yeah. All right, so we'd be doing, let's do a as a strike ball. Strike ball. Yes. Okay. And um, well, I think what we'll, need, we'll also like to do with 171 is preserve that we have, we have language on uh, building energy, you know, basically what we're calling the MPG sticker for building, building energy labeling, the voluntary program for building energy labeling. It was already in there. We would be removing the yeah. Duals, please. Well, let's, let's do the amending first, and then we'll start pruning as well. Uh, so you're. Let's, let's is start it a strike ball. Let's just do it as an addition. Okay. And, and then we'll have the whole thing assembled, and then we'll pull the pieces out together, looking at them. So do you want uh, the motion to be withdrawn for now, or are we. No, just no, that it would so not we'll be a strike ball. We would be amending okay. to append. This word, 171 is a current exist. So just to further amend it? So just to further amend And are you including the other strike code you were talking about before? Our earlier or not attempted one? Yes. And yes. Okay. So you put everything in that. Yes. So okay. we'll have right. one big, sure. we'll have a yeah. slightly overly big bill. Yep. So that everything that we've looked at will be in one place. And we'll sure. put things out. Mr. Sure. Chair, may I just? Does it make any sense just to, I mean, a lot of things are happening, just to get one more draft? Or, I just think, from hearing from others, that maybe it might be helpful. Confusing? Yeah. Okay. So we... If you don't mind, yeah. maybe... I could do that in 10 minutes. It's a rough draft, but... As long as we have something maybe in front of us. Okay.